Hi, I'm Toby Hodges, and this is the ICE 62 Targa. We're sailing off board of Barcelona, Port Genesta, for European Yacht of the Year competition. Sailing on board with owner of the yard, Malcolm Margara, the owner of the yacht, Favel, and the designer of the yacht, Umberto Felci, who's down below at the moment. And anyone that doesn't know these, these yachts, they are performance cruisers built in a yard near Milan. And this is the first 62 Targa so it's based on an, uh, an existing hull shape, but brand new deck, um, new coach roof design, very, very contemporary looking boat. Um, yeah, sexy hull shape really. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll get a bit of breeze to see what she does. So Pavel is the owner of the I-62 Targa. He's just showing us that everything can be done. He can manage this boat by himself. Hey. He's already sailed at 3,000 miles since I was last on board at the Can Boat Show to Cyprus and back. So, very keen sailor and yeah, likes, likes to sail the boat himself. So you've got an ocean furl, in boom furler on this, on a horse bars, two spreader rig. see the winch set up back here out of the actual social side of the cockpit but everything led to two winches each side so you can raise sails with the use of a toe and an index finger by the look of it so we've just come out of port put the keel down so drop that down a couple of meters and now setting self tacking jib. Code zero sailing on the I-62. We've been doing nine knots into the waves, now about nine, nine and a half, going mostly with them in 10, 11 knots true. Really lovely, lovely sailing. Easy speeds as well. Well, this is pretty nice. We have 11 and a half knots true, making nine knots into the swell. Up here alone on deck, I can see the appeal um, of sailing this solo or short handed, as the owner does, especially in conditions like this. So this, is, this is a carbon, carbon and glass hull and a full carbon deck. So 19 tons lightweight displacement. Feels really nice sailing in this in this swell as well. Really good control off the twin rudders. You see how it, well it's been designed to bring everything back to this area as well. So you can see from this uh, the sheet leads on the code zero here to the to the gunnel back here around the turning block through a clutch and then to the primary winch there. You can also see from the pedestals how you've got. Uh, hydraulic control for everything as well. So, halib winch, jib winches, mainsail winch, traveller winch, and then the furlers all down here. So really quite easy push button as long as everything's working. And also how neat the sheet leads are. So you can see perhaps how that German main sheet system leads down through the boom and then comes under the deck exiting really neatly here each side even the even the jammer itself built into the deck and out back to that sheet winch right by the helm so to let off there there is also a small tailing locker tail locker each side in here so that leaves yeah all the sailing area aft 
and then a big, big cockpit area here to enjoy under this bimini roof, which is not, it's going to be a, a dividing point, I'm sure, but I really like it. Um, two reasons. Obviously, it's shade, and it has a thousand watts of solar panel on there, and the main sheet. So it means you can get a main sheet traveler on here. Again, push button hydraulic controlled, but help you get a bit more shape to that main sail as well. And you see the Solbian panels on top of this Bimini structure as well. This is a huge tender garage on the ice. You can get a three meter ribbon here see the twin quadrants working away. Connected there by the pulley wheel. Really light steering on this. It's been a real, for a luxury cruiser, it's a real performance cruising feel to it. Stiff composite build. So our Ford, you have obviously the fixed bow sprit with the bow roller in it. Electric Code Zero furler integrated in there, then the self-tacking jib furler. That's for the stay sail furler to go in this area. There, you, uh, a recessed wind, windlass and an uh, anchor locker forward. And then a big sail lock in here, which is probably hard for you to see because it's full of fenders, but you can get uh, two flying sails in here and a stay sail quite easily, apparently. Neat feature on this on the fore deck here is having these removable pad eyes. So uh, yeah, Pavel the owner uses them to um, strap the sails down on the fore deck. So you can see right into the top of the keel. That's the keel in the lower position. Carbon trunk surrounding it. It's a very nice place when we made the ark to put all the bottles of uh, water. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good storage. Yeah, no, really, we made it, we used it. Okay. 500 bottles going. 500 on. bottles of water yeah. for the ark. Of half a litre, half a litre. <laughs> <laughs> so this shows the two formats of the table. In the raised position, obviously, that comes out there so they can pretty much almost join. And then in, in the lowered daybed position. And obviously there's a spray hood, which goes all around here, uh, which the owners found really useful, obviously going upwind, and then you have little lockers each side of the companionway. And moving down below, an interior also completely designed by Umberto Felci and his team. And um, cool, modern, st stylish Italian. So the only we're saying the th three briefs he asked from, from Felci's team were a performance cruiser that he could sail solo and that looked good. So every ice yachts model I've been on so far is very different, very, very different. And yeah, they are very semi custom based yard. This uh, done for this owner just wanted two heads. So three cabins and two heads. And um, yeah, I designed, I guess, quite a lot of the interior layer around having a uh, drop keel. So telescopic keel again, designed by Felci with a carbon trunk and Carboni uh, hydraulics inside that. And that's got a two meter scope on the keel. Got a nice feature here. So we're looking at uh, forward cam, masthead cam, uh, masthead aft cam. So that's the main sail up at the moment. And that is the prop in its uh, sail drive folded position. The saloon itself, this table here, you got the uh, push button controls for it, and that will raise up lift out, um, sorry, the leaves will fold out. Um, nice big position for that. Day bed sofa area. A lot of attention paid on getting a perfect horizon line through the whole windows. And with this semi-raised format, um, when you're standing to be able to see out 
as those coach roof windows as well. Cool contemporary style to that look, which you see particularly uh, from the outside. Still get a good size nav station area. And then there's, uh, as I say, semi ray saloon. So a couple of steps down into the galley area. And this one in particular has a lot of refrigeration space. So five fridges, four drawer fridges there. Wine cooler, washer dryer further off. Dishwasher. Freezer. Plenty of storage space. Again, the reason this, this boat in particular has got this much storage and cold storage space is the owner spends you know, five to six months aboard. So he wants it to be, you know, a home from home. So uh, it's it got all that freezer and refrigeration space, got a steam oven, the dishwasher's nice and close to the sink area, you know, it's it's all been very, very well thought out and done with in collaboration with the yard and the designer. So you can see below the saloon sole here, room for the tanks as well. So structural tanks, water tank built in uh, below the sole and in between the in between the actual longitudinal stiffeners. So it makes for a very, very stiff boat. In fact, felt you saying it's uh, it's a faster boat when you fill the tanks up, up, up until it does about 10 knots. Bonus cabin forward. A separate shower area here on the starboard side. And then plenty of, of storage space again up here. So hanging wardrobes. And then the whole of this bath lifts, I believe. Yeah, on gas struts there. So, yeah, like a car bonnet. Plenty of room under there. You got an opening hatch up above, so good natural light and ventilation. loads of storage in here all around that berth and again those lockers matching the sort of styling of the outside in terms of colour and, and following the lines. There's also a chart plotter behind there and a stereo system behind there and then a head area that doesn't need to sh share with the, sh the shower. And as mentioned this owner didn't want a third heads yeah, sails by himself a lot, not many guests normally. So use this area here as just for extra stowage. And then you have one double cabin on the starboard side here. Just a massive great berth really with yet more plentiful stowage. Access into the machinery shared be be between the two cabins. Day heads access in here, a couple of steps down and into the port aft double cabin with its own door into the heads and separate shower there. This, yeah, back in the in the port aft cabin here. This is with the access for the generator. So you've got the doors there to get to the generator there and to the aft of the engine. So you can pretty much get in here. Well, you can get in here. Um, there's also a panel above and the companionway steps forward that lift. So really pretty good access in here. Sea chest down there. You've got the Raycor fuel filters. Um, also got the hydraulics in here. And that is, yes, it is a big engine, but that's, yeah, it's a 200 horsepower Yamaha in this one, 195. Uh, reason being, it's the same size 
block, I believe, is the 150. So uh, it's just the electronics that change. So having that extra power, this allows the boat to use it if needs be. It can do 12 knots, I believe. And there's the forward access into the engine room as well. You can see out aft there into the, the gen set. So this I-62 Targa starts at 1.6 million euros ex VAT and the boat we're on equipped like this uh, with a lot of options is over 2 million. It's a cool boat, hope you liked it. Um, quick sail tour while we're doing the trials here for the European Yacht of the Year. See you next time.